Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, it's not a real big roundtable, but we got some some round. And we've got Landon, still no nickname, Harris. Maybe Landon the Landman Harris. It's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. Not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> Landon the Landman Harris. Landon, how are you? I'm doing well. Having a good week so far. Good to see you. And we've got Taria putting in the reps, Harris. Taria, how are things? Things are well, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's good to see you. And um, I think we've got a really good topic for today's Roundtable podcast. And it's something that I know I've struggled with um, a lot. I think a lot of people struggle with. It's sort of like this universal struggle that we can kind of get into and, and see how we the three of us sort of solve it for ourselves and, and help our, our coaching clients. So Sharia, what's the struggle? So I have found with my clients and with myself, especially in the beginning of the business, uh, the ebbs and the flows of business. So something as simple as, oh my gosh, I had three sales this week or this month and next month. I have one or I have none. And it's trying to stay motivated and stay encouraged to continue the course. Like business is going to ebb and flow. So do we get down and want to quit or how do we position ourselves to be able to proceed forward? Yeah, I, I, I love this, this topic because it doesn't just apply to business. You can be going along, you're having a great day Maybe you just got off the phone with your best friend and you're feeling on top of the world. You know what I mean? And then three minutes later, someone cuts you off in traffic or you, you know, you get an email that says, oh, you owe this much in taxes. And now your whole day can be ruined. Mm -hmm. So Landon, I'll start with you. With the ebbs and flows of business life, how do, how do you manage it and, and what, what types of things do you typically do? So this actually is a, this is something I feel like I've dealt with forever. And I say that uh, as an athlete, uh, as a swim coach, and now even in the land business, it's, it's kind of one of those cycles you always kind of go through through your life. So I've, I've looked at this in different angles and I'll say it this way. I feel like the best way to get over these dips or whatever that you go through or kind of start the reset button. Like when I say reset, it's more of begin from the beginning and do things that let's say in this business that you really like to do. Focus on that. Just keep plugging away at that. The second thing I would probably say is look at it long term. I think so. with anything that we do, I think so many times we get stuck on the what's in our face, what's happening right now. And we forget kind of down the road and, you know, you, you have to kind of go through that. And then the third part of that is like, maybe go back and remember all of the things that you did to get to this point. So it's kind of like you look forward, but then you also got to look back a little bit to say, okay, I did, you know, I only had five sales in the month of whatever. And this month, maybe we're not having that many sales, but remember when we did and those kind of things just kind of remind you, you can make it, you can do it and you just keep working at it. So it's probably my two yeah, cents no, on I, that. I, I love it. I, lo I love the perspective taking of, you know, and there's this that great book, The Gap and the Gain. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about that. And when you're in the gap, you're looking out in the horizon and you see how far you have to go. Yeah. But if you just reverse it and you see how far you've come from when you first started, you're in the game. You can always be in the game. It's the same thing. It's just a different perspective. And I think that, you know, what you're saying uh, applies to that is in business and in life as well. And, you know, just that resilience, just keep going you're going to be okay. You know, and there's just changes constant. So nice. I, I, I really love that. Um, as a follow-up question to you, uh, you know, I'm sure you see it with, especially your higher level 
swim clients, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You're trying to get into the Olympics. Yeah. And, and so, you know, these slight little things can be the difference. Yeah. And they, but they've also, like we all know, it's like, it's some, you know, at some point it's not even physical, it's mental. What, right. what kind of things do you help them with mentally? Wow. Um, great question. And actually it brings up a story, <laughs> a short story. Um, I was talking to one of the kids that I used to coach. She's actually swimming for Air Force now. This little girl, I say she's little, she's about 20 now, but she's, <laughs> she was about five, two, uh, didn't really feel the water. So it didn't come really natural to her, but she worked really hard. And we just got off the phone yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, and then she got cut from the team. Didn't have a really good season last year, so she got cut. So kind of looking bleak for her. We talked a lot, and we kind of went through um, how to look forward and what you need to do at this point. And the things that I we came up with were, one, set a new plan. You know, set up a, a uh, something actionable that you can kind of start making yourself do currently. What is that? Maybe she can get out and go run and maybe she can be a little bit more active. The second thing I, we discussed was start making a, a real decision. Do I want to keep swimming? Do I want to switch my schools or I want to stay where I am and make that decision and don't drag it out. Like we put a hard stop timeline, it, you know, we, so we have a, specific time that she has to make that decision. So there's no pressure to it, but there, you don't want this thing to just drag out forever. And ultimately I think she's going to be fine. I think she's going to transfer to somewhere else and things will move on. But I say that you look at this business, we do the same thing. Um, Just going through everything that we kind of look at, you know, I, I think just having that reset button, you start over, you start looking at, okay, well, what can I do? And then once you figure that out, then set a a window of like, okay, well, I can do these things and let's just start looking forward at the, at, at that. We can just kind of step into it. Um, So I think, I think a lot of things that, you know, athletics or life or even just business, like they all tie together. So I think we, we do a lot of that um, as we look in this business. Yeah. I I love that sort of, you know, dealing with your disappointment in a realistic way Mm -hmm. and, and not being in denial but also having a vision Mm -hmm. and not sort of stewing in it. Like you don't get to stew in the the disappointment of being cut for too long. Um, I I think that's really brilliant and Mm -hmm. uh, probably super helpful for, uh, for her. Yeah. It's just, you know, pick yourself up, dust it, dust yourself off, keep moving forward. Life's not over. (laughs) That's yeah, yeah. I think that's the way I look at life, and that's the way I look at this business. I look at that all the time. It's like eh, it's not over. Yeah, it may sting a little bit, but you're not dead. You can keep going. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, it just reminds me of that that story. Um, you know that that ball keeps bouncing, right? It's like you just never know. Um, mm-hmm. I think I wrote about it in the Review Digest. I love that story. The it's like that that old fable where. Um, the the rancher is uh, loses his horse, You're right? You guys know yeah. that story, and yeah. the and and the people are like, oh, it's so terrible, you lost your horse. He's like, we'll see, and then the horse <laughs> comes back a week later with all the horse friends, and then the uh, the villagers are like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky, you got all these new horses now. He's like, we'll see, and then. <laughs> His son's breaking one of the horses and training one of the horses. Horse bucks him off and he breaks his leg. And then the villagers are like, oh, that's terrible. Your, your son broke his leg. Like, we'll see. And then, you know, a week later, the army comes around looking for the for his son. Like, we need a, he needed him to go to war. And sure enough, he's in the hospital. He couldn't go to war. And, you know, they're like, oh, you're so lucky. He's like, we'll see. So it just continues. It's continues. That path. Yeah. Um, Taria, put in the reps terrace. What about you? The ebbs and flows of life. How do you, how do you deal with them? And what, what do you suggest people do? So I, we've kind of touched on what I, what, how I deal with them 
one thing I, I like to verbalize. I, I like to communicate like this sucks. I don't like this. Like I have to, I have to discuss it. Landon knows this. If not, it stews in my brain. So for me, for other people, maybe just writing it down or, you know, something, but I have to get it out of my brain. So I sit and I vent to Landon. Um, this is terrible. This is whatever. And I give myself a window, 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm on to actionable items. Okay. So is this something that I can solve? How? Is this something that I cannot solve? Then how do I deal with the fact that I can't change it? So I am more um, logical when it comes to these kind of things. So I'll have spreadsheets and diagrams and all of that put together step by step, how I can move through it, just depending upon how difficult it is. You know, we didn't sell a, a property this week. For me, I've gotten used to that. It's okay then let's see what we do with marketing next week. And, and those are a little easier, but the ones that really, you know, as you said, knock you off your horse, I try to be more methodical in how I deal with those. One is getting it out. Two is coming up with a plan. If I can fix it and coming up with a plan, if I can't fix it. Um, and then I just kind of take those actions moving forward. Okay. So how do you get it out? I talk. I, I talk. like yeah, I talk every now and then I might write like I have in my notes on my phone or on my computer. So it's almost like a journaling where I just kind of journal how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, just to get it off me. Yeah. Have you have you heard of morning pages? I think it's Julia Cameron. She I have not. It's kind of a fam like this famous sort of methodology. You wake up in the morning and you just do stream of consciousness writing. You just get all of it out. And I, I've tried it, especially when I was going through a difficult period in my life. And, you know, half the words would be curse words, but you just kind of yeah. stop. You can't stop writing and you kind of right. get your inner curmudgeon out and you just feel so much better. You're like, oh, you do. I got all this out that was kind of swimming in my head onto yeah. the paper mm -hmm. and you just sort of exhaust yourself. And then you're like, okay, now I can take on the day, you know, more clear headed than before. Right. I, I get the sense that's what you're doing just in a yeah. different way. Mm -hmm. Correct. Every now and then it might be writing, but for the most part, it's just me communicating with Landon or one of my girlfriends. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a release. And then sometimes when you talk about it, for me, it doesn't seem as bad, right? It just doesn't seem quite as bad when you can kind of pull yourself out of it and look at it. So first right. you deal with the feelings and then you're, yep. you're going through the logical step Correct. of solving the problem. Yep. I can't stay in feelings for too long. So I get them out and then I have to go to what's next. And then just, and just take action and then solve what you can solve and let go what you, what you can't mm -hmm. solve. Correct. Correct. That, that seems very logical <laughs> and, and very practical and very helpful, I know. very wise. I tell uh, her she's a Vulcan all the time. Is that right? <laughs> I yeah. mean, <laughs> so, or, or she's my very family logical. Will call yes. me like the tin man. They're like, well, here comes the tin man. <laughs> so, Tree, if your Spock is is Landon uh, Kirk, he's Kirk for sure. He's Kirk. I can yeah, be Kirk all day. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, you know, look that that Enterprise ran beautifully when when you got. You know, the, the emotion, you've got the, That's right. the logic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. the, it's a killer combination. I may crash it, but we'll come back. <laughs> the whole shit yeah. crash. I mean, you know, Tree is just like that. That doesn't compute, Landon. No. <laughs> I don't even logical. understand how that works. <laughs> but, uh, exactly. So, so for me, I mean, the ebbs and flows of business, um, I always kind of just lean back on my sort of, uh, you know, I've been a long-term, long-time meditator. Uh, you know, I would say I'm like a quasi-Buddhist, if you will. Um, although I don't really subscribe to Buddhism. But there's this, I do like the idea of, you know, just a simple sort of idea of pain is inevitable, right? It is inevitable. Like yeah. bad things are inevitably going to happen to all of us. In fact, if we take it all the way down, you guys know I love my weak row cap, right? <laughs> we're going to die. We're going to lose everyone. We're going to lose everything. We live long enough. It's all gone, right? So 
pain is inevitable. And, you know, your properties are going to default. Uh, your VAs are going to disappoint you. Um, you know, your intake might process might not be perfect. It's going to be frustrating. Uh, you're going to have this great deal. And then at the last minute, the seller might just change his mind and you're disappointed. So this pain is inevitable in any business, not land business, any business, in any relationship, everything in life. It's just inevitable. But the part that I always like to remember is the suffering is optional. Why do I have to suffer with it? And I don't. And so to watch, and it's sort of like the way that you guys do it, I sort of watch like a curious observer, the thoughts and the feelings sort of come and go. And just this idea of letting it go. And just like it's a cloud um, passing by, like it's always sort of blue sky, but then there's the clouds of life. They come, they go, I can watch them, I can feel them, but I don't have to be attached to them. I don't have to spend the whole day suffering, reliving what happened three hours ago with that person or reliving or, or you know, keep playing in my mind. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to have a difficult conversation with um, someone. I don't have to keep playing it, playing it over and over and over again. I, it doesn't do any good. I mean, I, I think I, you know, I tell the story a lot. My first boot camp, it was two and a half days of me talking, and I, I just didn't sleep that night. I just kept playing it over and over and over again. Like it didn't solve a thing. Like I, I, I had to deal with it when I could deal with it. I couldn't outthink the day. And so at some point, like you're prepared enough, you just let it go. And you're like, okay, and when that time happens, I'll deal with it. If I have a bill I have to pay, I don't think about it all day long. It's like, okay, here's my time to pay a bill. Here's my time for that difficult conversation. I set it aside. And so this idea, this Buddhist idea of non-attachment, I think it's really served me well as far as the ebbs and flows of life. Don't get me wrong. People can push my buttons like anyone else. And there's this great uh, saying, and you know, if you think how, how calm your mind is, go spend, you know, a week with your parents. Right. So like, that'll be the test. Exactly. Okay. Yes. You think you, think you got it all under control. Okay. <laughs> go, go spend some time with the people that can push your buttons the most. Correct. Exactly. So, um, but I, I, yeah, so it's a practice. It's, it's a practice. It's something that you get better with at time. You don't wake up one day and just have this in the perfect spot. And I think that's really a, a great metaphor for business too. It's your practice. You're getting better at every aspect of the business each day that you do it. It's you only fall behind when you procrastinate it or you don't do it. Um, and you don't get better. So that continuous improvement, that Kaizen seems like it's, it's a great way to uh, approach it. But Absolutely. I really went on a rant there. I feel like I talked a lot. You did well. And I was, I was going to ask you like, if you would recommend practicing because not, we don't all start off. Not right. most of us with the ability to kind of pull it in, rein in your thoughts, rein in your emotions it takes time. So mm -hmm. you got to put in the reps. Yeah. You got to put in the reps. I mean, I think I, like this, this whole idea of choiceless awareness, like people are like, Oh, I hate meditating. I, I can't stand it. I can't, you know, calm my mind or I'm always lost in thought or like they're judging the meditation. Well, really all it is, is the practice is, yeah, you will get lost in thought, right? It's inevitable. You can't right. stop your thoughts. Just like the, the outside, issues of life are going to hit you. You mm -hmm. can't stop that either. Someone's mm -hmm. going to cut me off in traffic today, right? I, I, I can't control that. <laughs> Most of the things that happen in, in our lives, we can't control, but we can't control our reaction to it. And so practicing that, seeing that, and, and being identified to the fact that, okay, um, this is not the best version of myself, I can begin again. Just like what Landon and Tree were talking about. Um, and sort of uh, reframe it and see, okay, how can I learn from this? How can I get better the next time uh, can be really helpful. And that's like a Stoke philosophy as well. 
Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, and, and anything can be reframed, even yeah. the worst mm-hmm. tragedies in life. And, and really, when, I, when you think back on your life, uh, you know, what at the moment seemed like the worst thing in the world, you know, you just never know. It, it turns out when you reframe it, like, oh, this was a great gift. Absolutely. And I just didn't, you know, recognize it at the time. And again, the suffering is optional. Right. So I like that. That leads us to having Landon hopefully to deal with the pain of tip of the week, <laughs> but not suffer through tip of the week. <laughs> so Landon, before we go to your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income publishers to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. I have to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd, Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. And that flight school tuition ain't going to cost you nothing, guaranteed. Learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Solve your money. Solve your time problems without any headaches. Flight school is the way to do it. Landon Harris, what is your tip of the week? Okay. So my tip of the week, we use Slack a lot. And... Uh, it definitely helps us kind of manage our team. Now in Slack, there is a, I believe it's a new option. It's new to me. So uh, this option allows you to verbally kind of communicate with your team. Now, so if you're familiar with Boxer or uh, even the iPhone has it where you can verbally leave a message with somebody, you can go back and forth with them. This has the same option in uh, Slack where you can go back and forth. I believe you get one member that's free. And then after you get, after you upgrade, you can uh, include up to 14 members uh, in your team that you can communicate, but it's cool. It's cool. I was uh, playing around with it uh, with our intake manager uh, just a little while ago. So um, just kind of neat little thing. It's sometimes you don't have time to type it all out. Maybe you're on the road and you just need to get a quick uh, note to your team and just let them know what you're thinking. Maybe just, Hey, great day. But usually it's always business, but I think uh, it's a pretty neat little, uh, uh, little action that, uh, that's in uh, Slack. Sure. By the way, you should see the, like the look on Tria's face right now. She's just <laughs> beaming. She just seems so proud that number one, Landon's doing this on the podcast, but number two, like she doesn't have to do the tip of the week. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Fast. What, what did you think of his first tip of the week? I like it because he made it something that I'm going to use. So I like it a lot. And okay, oftentimes well, I, I do just need to give like, hey, go into this, do this, do like, I don't want to type it out. It gets lost in the translation. So it's a good, it's a good one. All right. I, I, I think it's great just because I think that when you're typing, you lose tone. And so yeah. when, you're, when you're communicating with your team, that tone can make the whole, like the biggest difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes me think of like Ron Burgundy. I'm Ron Burgundy. I'm Ron Burgundy. I'm Ron Burgundy. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Darn it. You don't read anything you put on that teleprompter. <laughs> so, um, but like, you know, if you're just reading it, it's not funny as opposed to hear, hearing the tone. And, and so even, um, you know, taking the sting out of something, uh, like, you know, a, a text can come out very harsh because now they're, they're using your, like they're imagining your tone, right? As opposed right. to you can give them your tone and then it's like, oh, that's clear, pretty reasonable. Uh, to do, especially if you know it's Taria with her Spock like Vulcan tone, right? I will need that due diligence report by Monday. It's kind of close. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. All right. Well, I, like I want to, you like it? I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way that I would be able to cajole. Land and Tree to come back on the next week's round table is if you do three little favors. Follow, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review 
support at the I'm going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich to give to your friends, your family. You know, put it on, you know, brag about it. Like, put it on the socials. Like, here's my signed copy of Dirt Rich to help me solve my time and money problems. What are you doing with your life, people? Right. There you go. Make sure the tone yeah. is right. But make yes. exactly. And then you're like, yeah. because I listen to the podcast, <laughs> I'm <laughs> slacking. I'm <laughs> This thing. So, and by the way, Dirt Rich Two is coming out very soon. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm, I'm excited. excited about it. Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys like the the plot thickens? How to scale your land business without skipping a business without skipping a beat? I like that. That's going to be the title. You playing around with that title? That's a. I'm, I mean, it could be. I, I'm pretty sure that's where um, landed. Plot, the plot thickens. <laughs> yeah. Instead, like instead of the next plot, yeah, it's the plot thickens because thickens. it's it's it means that it's. It's getting more, mm-hmm. uh, you know, more sophisticated, if you will. Mm-hmm. Right now we're scaling; it's thickening. It'd be really cool. I like it. I like yeah. it. I don't, nice play okay. on plot. Next, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'll I'll send you guys uh, the uh, cover. We're working on the cover too. Okay. The graphics. Yeah. See see what you think. But um, all right. Well. Thanks, everybody. And uh, let's do this. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. 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 Not bad. I see. You know what? With three people, it's not. It's not a bad roundtable. <laughs> <laughs> two. Now, see now, two people. You couldn't really sit at a roundtable, could you? Right. It doesn't really yeah. go around. It's just back and forth. Yeah. It'd be awkward. <laughs> right. But I, you know, we Very we. Good. I think we pulled this one off. Considering, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I mean, they were the jealous. They, the they weren't crew. on this one. They are. They I think are. I, I'm going to vox them. <laughs> yeah, you guys missed an epic <laughs> roundtable podcast today. Make sure your tone's right. No, my tone's to be excited. Like <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, you guys don't show up next week. <laughs> Take, a not, we're fine. Take a break. Take a break. We're fine. <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, I'm kidding. We're not. We we want all the coaches there. Yeah, we need those guys. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.